What's going on everybody? It is your favorite Auntie Mo and I am here to give you the review for the last and final season of How to Get Away with Murder. Y'all, I love this show. Love it, love it. This is season six, episode one, Say Goodbye. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all look here. Before I get into the review, I just want to give a shout out and a thank you to my niece out there that called me out in my comments. Because if you watched my mukbang video that I did with my sis, I said that I was going to be doing the review to How to Get Away with Murder. Y'all know this came on Wednesday. It's bright and early on a Sunday morning. And I do apologize because, baby, she left me the comment. She was like, look here, auntie. You said she was going to be doing a review for How to Get Away with Murder. And I ain't seen it yet. So what's up? Where is that, though? I don't know if you said it with the neck roll, but that's how I read it with the neck roll. But baby, thank you. Because let me tell you, y'all hold me accountable for some of the things that I say that I was going to do as far as the reviews, what videos I was going to bring out. And I thank you for that. Thank you so much. So, Poo Poo, here is the review for How to Get Away with Murder. Yes, Auntie is late with it. But you love your auntie and you still going to watch it. And I thank you for that. I sure enough appreciate you. So, hopefully y'all are ready for the review. Because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. I got my red Kool-Aid and Ciroc. Let's get into it. So it starts off real dark, right? It's at a funeral. Now, everybody there. Everybody except for Asher is there. Connor is there. Michaela is there. Oliver, Nate, Bonnie, Frank. And the pastor is talking, right? So everybody is like real quiet and looking sad. Bonnie is holding on to Frank's arm. And you hear Bonnie say, we're free now. Next thing you know, you see baby Christopher run up. Now pause for the cause. I thought baby Christopher was a damn baby. This little boy was about four or five damn years old. He was big as hell. I was like, damn, how much damn time passed? He runs up to the coffin. Stands over the coffin, pulls out a gun. Stay dead, bitch. Points the gun, looks down, baby. It's Annalise. Next thing you know, Annalise screams, no. It's like she wakes up to the present time. Annalise is in recovery. She is in the middle of group. They were doing an activity where they visualize their funerals. Who are the people that are there? What are the people feeling? What are they saying? That startled the hell out of Annalise. She was the only one that screamed in the middle of the group. She was like, no! Everybody was like, damn. What went on in your goddamn visualization? Now, Annalise is there under the name of Karen. She's not there under her regular name, right? She's also au natural. I love when Annalise is straight natural. With the kinky hair, no makeup, none of that. She looks, to me, in my opinion, that's when she looks the most beautiful. When she is just straight natural. Love it. Beautiful. Fight me if you want to. Pretty as hell. Afterwards, Annalise is sitting down. She's eating her lunch, breakfast, whatever it is. Her roommate comes up and sits down with her. Now, her roommate is this annoying ass woman named Sally. She's one of these ladies that just talks way too doggone much, trying to get all up in her business. And we all know Annalise don't like that. She's a loner. Don't come asking me 50 million, 1100 questions if I invite you into my business as it is. So she goes up to Annalise and she's like, so what is it that you wanted to stop? Meaning when she yelled out, stop when they were doing a little visual, visual uh, visualization. Now Annalise is basically, she's one of these women that don't really get the hints that she don't want to be bothered. So Annalise, Basically, she gets irritated with her. She ends up getting up and she's walking away because she's like, look here, girl. I don't want to have choked hell out you, but you really don't understand. I don't want to be bothered right now. So they're having another group session where they're talking about everything that happened in the visualization that they did for their funerals, right? The group leader is asking everybody, so what was it that happened at your funeral? Does anybody want to talk about what happened? Here goes Sally, damn Annalise's roommate. Well, I like to think with my visualization, I was thinking about how the people, group of this like, eh, nope, I ain't talking about you. Like, chill out, sit down, we'll get to you in a minute. Annalise, let me know how you was feeling in your visualization, this, that, and the other, right? Now, Annalise, again, she it's hard for her to open up, especially in a group of people that she don't even damn know. She's just trying to get there, get off that damn drinking. She ain't trying to be here and, and, and be friends with y'all and shoot shit and all that. She ain't trying to do all of that. She's trying to get off that liquor so she can get back to saving lives and fighting crime and all that like she was doing, right? So when the group leader asked her again, how did you feel at your funeral? How did everybody feel? And Elise is basically like everybody there, they were grateful that I was dead. So the people in the group that's, you know, her, her, her um, 
group members or whatever that's there, they basically start calling her out. Like, they can tell that she's not being real and being honest. And Elise gets irritated and basically starts calling the whole damn group out. You're born, you're chauvinistic, you're narcissistic, you want a bunch of attention, whoop the whoop, yada, yada, yada. Everybody like, well, damn, girl, hey, we just trying to get a breakthrough with you. <sighs> Bitch, we trying to see you and love you, but you going off on every doggone body. Then the group leader asked her, Annalise, what are some words that you would use to describe yourself? Now, this is what was making, starting to make me sad. Annalise was like, sad, ugly, mean, bitch, um, homewrecker, slut, whore. She was just saying, oh, it was just making me sad. I was like, oh, Annalise, no. And you could see a little bit of a breakthrough starting, just a a little bit of a breakthrough starting with Annalise. So after she said all of that, the group all said in unison, we see you and we love you. And I thought, I was like, damn, Annalise, golly, don't say that about yourself. So back at the crib, all the kids are there. They're all talking about why did Annalise go back to rehab? What happens if the bar finds out that, you know, all of this is happening with her? They're also talking about Laurel and the baby being missing. Because as you remember, in the last episode of the last season, Annalise and Laurel, they were on the street somewhere. Laurel got snatched up off the street. Connor and Oliver were babysitting baby Christopher, and he ended up getting snatched up on um, up off the doggone house. Now, Michaela wants to go to the cops, but Bonnie is telling her, look here, we got enough heat on us as it is already we don't need to involve them in anything else that we doing oliver over here crunked up he wants frank to go out kidnap somebody and torture their ass until they give him some kind of answers about what's going on i'm like oliver if you don't sit your dog on ass down some way for you get everybody up in here called Tegan is meeting with, I don't know if it's a detective or it's a detective for the law firm. She's meeting with them over at the law firm, right? And so they're asking her, how did Emmett seem the last time that you seen him, you know, before you left? Basically, they're trying to allude to the fact that maybe he committed suicide. Now, they're thinking that, um, because Tegan is telling them, like, he was fine. Like, what are you trying to say? And they're like, well, maybe he's seen the news. He got wind of the governor and maybe the governor trying to expose him for some things. Maybe he wanted to take matters into his own hands. And so Tegan was like, oh, so basically, Basically, so he conveniently just had some poison right then and there to poison himself. And the detective is like, uh, what you mean he poisoned himself? Now, Tegan, you slip right there. Tegan, you were slipping a lot this episode. I was like, wait a minute. Ooh, girl. I had, ooh, wait a minute. I had... I had high hopes for you, but now you're really starting to make me question every doggone thing about you. So we get a flashback to when she calls Annalise and she lets Annalise know that Emmett was dead. You know, she was in the office and she, that's when she walked in and she's seen him. So she's calling Annalise hysterical crying about Emmett being dead. Now, before the detective leaves, he tells Tika, so I heard that you took the place of Emmett as the new lead for the law firm. And she's like, yeah, he's like, all right, well, thank you. I mean, no, she says, thank you. Cause he says, good job. Now, when he said that, okay, so you took over for Emmett, I'm thinking, mm-hmm, that's another little flag right there, Tegan. What's really hood, Tegan? What's really hood? She ends up calling Annalise after the um, detective leaves, and she leaves Annalise a message because, of course, Annalise can't answer her phone because she's in rehab. She leaves Annalise a message like, girl, I thought you would have smuggled your phone in your bra. You ain't answered the damn phone. Anyways, I'm trying to give you the... The whoop de whoop of what's going on. Call me back when you get this doggone message. Michaela's at the house, laying in the bed, crying, holding on to one of baby Christopher's toys or a pillow or something, looking at a picture of Laurel crying. That's her best friend. Now, Connor seems to think that maybe Laurel ran away on purpose. She don't want to be seen. Now, him, Asher, and Oliver, they're all downstairs, and they're looking at something on the computer. Something about, alluding to the, something about, um, Annalise knowing who Michaela's birth father is. Now, as you know, everybody who who's like this, um, what is it called? The Keaton Five, she's connected to them in some kind of way. Well, now we're starting to learn about Michaela's story. She actually knew who her birth father was. Just then, Frank walks in and Frank tells Oliver that he wants him to set up some surveillance so they can try to find Laurel's phone. He wants to set up a ping to see um, to see if he can like try to track her down and see where she is, right? Gabriel comes by the house. Michaela comes downstairs and she tells the guys that she really doesn't want to see him, right? So she wants them to help her try to get him out the house, to try to get him away. She goes outside and she talks to him for a minute. Basically, he tells her that he wants her, that she's been avoiding him, and that, you know, he's really feeling her like, damn, girl, why you doing me like that? Just then, Asher walks outside. Asher tells Michaela, hey, Laurel's inside. She want to talk to you inside the house where she's at, inside. 
Like, boy, if you was trying to be discreet, like, you just blew that damn cover right then and there. Damn, like, damn, Asha, really? So as soon as Michaela goes inside, Asha starts to charge up Gabriel. Like, what is your intentions with Michaela? What do you want to do with her? And I'm just thinking, like, boy, if you don't go sit your ass down some damn well. Back at therapy, Annalise is in a group and they're doing this activity where the names that they use to describe themselves, you know, like ugly, mean, slut, whore, bitch, they have it written down on these flashcards and they have the cards on these pillows. They're using like their hands or sticks or whatever to basically beat these words, to be released of these words. It's an activity that they're doing right now. Everybody's like beating the hell out these pillows. Like, I'm worth it. I'm not a slut. I'm not a whore. Everybody loves me. I'm just going out beating the pillows. Now, Annalise is looking around like, okay, now what the hell is going on here? What is these fools doing? She not really catching it right then and there, right? So later on when she meets with the group leader, the group leader lets her know, like, I get it. You know, that's not really your thing. Annalise asked her, so what is your thing? She was like, my vibrator. I was like, oh, girl, hey. I ain't mad at you, hey. The group leader basically is letting Annalise know that you need to start understanding what it is and the reasons why you're here and the reasons that's leading you to here. Annalise, again, it's hard for her to open up, but she's tired of feeling guilty. She's tired of feeling sad. She's tired of feeling bad about herself and she wants to be better. So again, you start to see another little breakthrough starting to happen with Annalise. Nate goes to Bonnie's office because he wants to know who the medical examiner is that's going to be working on Emmett's body. Now, first, Bonnie don't want to say nothing because we already know Nate can be dumb sometimes. A lot of the moves that he makes he don't really think out so finally she does end up giving him the information he goes to see who the me is the me tells him that there's not going to be an autopsy there's not even a body that it was already transferred to london and that's where the autopsy and everything is going to be done now nate is like well who in the world would do that why would they even send the body to, to london like that doesn't make any sense who signed off on that lo and behold the me looks at the paper it was Tegan ass that signed off on the transfer. Back at the office, Tegan is in Emmett's old office, right? His glasses are sitting on his desk. She goes up to his desk and she looks at the glasses all sad or whatever. Next thing you know, Nate walks in. Nate asks Tegan like, okay, so what's up with the whole transferring the body to London? Like what you got to do with that? She claims that the partners of the law firm came to her and basically made her sign off on the whole transfer. He was like, well, that don't seem sketchy to you. She was like, of course it seems sketchy to me, but they my damn bosses. What do you want me to do? Then she tells him, you need to stop talking to here. The Castillos, the Castillos probably got it blood. Baby, when she said Castillos, she says it with such novella in her. I love the Castillos. They got this place bugged and they listen to everything that we doggone say. Nate let them know, like, look here, I want them to know so they can know that I'm coming for that ass. Um, Tegan is like, what? So you can end up like Emmett? Nate, like, oh, is that a threat? I'm saying the same doggone thing. Tegan, sis, you, you real suspect, like, sis, I don't know what to think about these moves that you making, sis, for real. And I'm going to keep my good eye on your ass. Back at the house, Connor and Oliver are looking at this thing, and they see that Laurel's phone is pinging every two seconds. London, Florida, Paris, Africa, ATL shawty. Like, it's binging all over the doggone place. Frank is getting irritated, and he basically telling Oliver and Connor, like, I hope y'all can watch this better than y'all can watch Christopher. Oliver getting mad. He like, hey, look here. You just mad because you wasn't watching Christopher because Laurel didn't trust your ass to watch him. Uh, Frank, like, Nick, whatever. Go sit your ass down. That's what kind of had to stand up and like, yup, he ain't lying. We got the paperwork to prove it. Oliver standing to the side like, hey, bitch, what? Back at the rehab, um, Annalise ends up getting a phone call from Bonnie. Yes, she did have her phone smuggled in there. As soon as her phone rings, her old nosy ass roommate, Sally, um, you're supposed to turn those in. Annalise like, well, damn, bitch, sue me. Annalise ends up going outside talking on the phone with Bonnie. Bonnie's giving her an update on the whole Emmett thing, the autopsy, how his body got transferred to London, all of that. whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. After her phone call, she comes back in, and the roommate's like, um, I don't know how to tell them that you got your phone. They on their way up here right now. And Lisa was getting ready to crack her damn skull. 
JK, JK, that's the girl says, like she was playing with or whatever, right? Sally then asked Annalise who Bonnie was because she heard her when she was out there on the phone. Now, Annalise is getting irritated with her. She's like, girl, look here, ask me one more doggone question. I'm going to crack your motherfucking skull. Like, stop asking me these damn questions. Then Bonnie's like trying to tell her, look here, you are such a hard person to get along with. You wonder why don't nobody want to talk to you? Don't nobody want to be around you? That just gets on my damn nerves. I mean, damn, at least I'm trying to be cool with you. After that, that set Annalise off. Annalise started going off on dog on Sally and she was wrong for that she was like you wrong you mad because your husband don't love you your kids drive you crazy your kids this your kids that she started going off on polo low Sally then she got said something that got on Sally's like that they hit a chord with her she was like you obsessed over those kids you want your kids to need you Sally was like look here I hate them kids I hate being a mama and I hate myself for hating them kids I'm like damn Annalise you broke polo low Sally down like that she wasn't even ready for that. So we get a flashback to see what it was that actually led Annalise to rehab, right? Now Annalise, when she gets that call afterwards from Tegan about Emma being dead, we see that Annalise is in a bar. Annalise starts taking clear shots of that damn vodka to the head. Next thing you know, she on the dance floor with some random dude. They end up going in the bathroom. Next thing you know, Annalise starts tooting lines. She tooting lines. Taking shots to the head, all on the dance floor, passes out. Next thing you know, she wakes up. She's in a hospital with a big-ass bandage on her head. She sees Bonnie talking to the doctor. Bonnie's like, so what happened? Like, you know, what was all in her system? The doctor says she had fentanyl, I think she said MDMA and cocaine, all in her system. And that's what it was that ended up leading her ass to rehab. I was like, damn, Annalise, not the, not the white girl up your nose, Annalise. Back at the house, Oliver and, um... Connor, they're still looking for Laurel. They're getting frustrated. Long story short, they end up goosing. While they upstairs goosing, downstairs Asher and Michaela, they have a little girl talk because Michaela is still looking for her birth parents, right? Now, mind you, she don't know that Connor, Asher, and um, Oliver already know that Annalise knew who her birth father was. Now, they start to have a little girl talk. They're talking about Gabriel, and Michaela tells Asher that her and... um. Gabriel, they ain't goosed yet. Like, ain't nothing going down between them just yet. She just, she wants to try to figure out everything first. You know, all this stuff that didn't happen with Laurel, they done threw her all off in the doggone head. Meanwhile, back over at Bonnie and Frank's house, Frank over there taking a whole body to the head, his dog on self, he drunk, leaving Laurel voice messages. Laurel, please. Please, Laurel. I'm telling y'all, everybody thinking that Laura probably up and disappeared and did this on her own. She probably did, because I honestly didn't trust Laura from the last season. It's something about that girl and her family. I just, I don't, the Castillos, I don't trust them. Y'all, the part that I left out after Annalise went off on Sally, and Sally started yelling back at Annalise, telling her that she hate her kids. She hate being a mama, and she hate herself for hating the damn kids. She said that that was her fourth time being in doggone rehab. She said every time she goes, she goes back, think it's going to work, but every time she go home, them damn kids are still there. <laughs> I thought that was wrong as hell. Sally, you wrong as hell. Wrong as hell, girl. You need more therapy than what you did in doggone rehab for. So after they get to talking, I guess in a way, Annalise starts to feel bad. Annalise, for whatever dumbass reason, decides to divulge information to Sally. Well, my real name is Annalise Keaton, and people think that I murdered my husband, but I didn't. I helped cover it up. Why are we confessing shit like this, Annalise? Why she need to know that? The next morning when Annalise wakes up, Sally ain't there in her bed, but Annalise can hear like the recording of the, like the little operator thing the police have. She can hear that outside, so she's like, oh shit, this bitch done went in Takashi 6 9 my ass. She get up and she go outside, she looking around, and one of her other group members was like, Dan, did you hear about what happened? She like, nah, what happened? One of the dudes that was in group with her ended up going off on a cook, bitch, because they ran out of bacon. I feel them though. I get violent over bacon too. I ain't gonna even lie. But she was like, whoo, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me go find this white girl, Sally, make sure she ain't over here to catch this. Not on my ass. So, Annalise ends up going and finding Sally. She goes and sits down at the table with Sally. And she tries to, like, slip it in there. She was like, whoo, Lord, so I took some melatonin last night. Got a bitch messed up in the head. I may have rambled on and said some shit I didn't mean to say. I apologize. I'm sorry. Sally was like, look here. I see you. And I love you. Basically, is what she was saying to her. Annalise was like, who thank God. Y'all, y'all hear this? This damn alarm. This alarm and me gonna fight. My neighbor 
for whatever reason, don't know how to keep his damn alarm in check. And it's getting on my nerve. It's going to give me a twitchy goddamn eye. When I tell you this alarm goes off all times of the day, all times of the night, all times of the whenever, and it will, it's going to be like this, probably till I'm done recording this video, probably till I'm done editing, it's going to be like this. Y'all, this damn horn threw me off for a minute. What the hell was I saying? So y'all, later on, after Annalise talks with Sally, she goes back in the room, and so she gets out that pillow. She gets out that pillow, baby, and she starts doing that punching exercise. Annalise, I forgive you. You're not ugly. You're not a slut. You're not a whore. You're not a monster. You're not mean. You're not a bitch. Y'all, she almost had your auntie breaking down. I was like, oh, Annalise, yes. Break every chain, girl. Break them chains. Break them chains. Michaela ends up going over to Gabriel's house, basically letting him know, like, look here, I want you to. My best friend done dipped off and left from me. I think she did it on purpose, so I'm trying to deal with that. Now, look here. My only stipulation with wanting you and you want me is, is Nick, don't lie to me. Don't break up with me for no reason. Don't ghost me and not let me know what's going on. I need you to know that this is what's going to be the doggone deal. This you grab by his family. June's like, look here, if me and you got a problem with this, I'm going to cut these off and I'm going to feed them to a garbage disposal. Do we got this clear understanding? He was like, hell yeah, we got an understanding. Then they start goosing. I know that it was no dog gonna happen. Nate's doing some research on Tegan and he sees that Tegan is now the new head of the law firm. As he's doing his research looking up her, Annalise ends up calling Nate. Next thing you know, we see Nate goes and picks up Annalise from the airport. He like, damn, what kind of rehab let you go in and out in a week? She was like, look here, I couldn't take the chance of the bar finding out about me being in rehab because you already know once the bar find out, baby, that's X Nate. They gonna cut all of her rights off once again. And you know she just got her doggone rights back at that. Nate gives her the update basically that he got word from the, the Emmy in London that the reason for Emmett's death was a heart attack. And um, Annalise is like, see, that's the whole reason why y'all need me back. Y'all know damn well that fool ain't down no heart attack. And we know that, Annalise. It's I'm, I'm, It was something Tegan set up. I don't give a damn nobody say it was something that Tegan ass set up. Annalise ends up sending out a mass text to all the kids telling them that she needs to meet up with them. She's back. They need to come to the house ASAP, right? Now, at this time, Michaela is at the house with Gabriel. After they done got through goose and she looks at her phone and she sees that um, Annalise wants her to come to the house. She go in the bathroom, start getting dressed. As she's going in the bathroom getting dressed, Gabriel's mama ends up calling. Now, before that, she tells them, she tells Gabriel that she promised Connor and Oliver that she would cook for them that night so that's why she had to go back to the house didn't say nothing about Annalise being home just then Gabriel's mama calls Gabriel talking on the phone with his mama she was like yeah you missed my phone call this week that means you have to talk to you know you have to call me twice this week um something basically something about him being in school he was like how else are we gonna get our reparations if I'm not in school she was like mm -hmm, yeah I believe it when I see it this whole time mama downstairs looking at this fool in the window She's sitting in her car. Now, mama, where the hell are you supposed to be at? Why is you downstairs in the car spying on him like that? So the kids are all at Annalise's crib, right? They're getting ready to do the exercise that she just did where she had her breakthrough. She got a pillow, she got a fire poker, and she wants all of them to basically beat out the old memories and everything that's holding them back, even Laurel. Now, Michaela ain't with it. You know, she already want to go to the police, but um, Annalise is letting Michaela know the police are already there. They already searching the house. They're already on top of that. We see the camera cuts to where the police are there at the house. They're searching Laurel's room, searching baby Christopher's room, everything. Now, at this point, Bonnie and Frank are there. As the police are searching, Frank sees this picture, and he sees that there's this little piece of paper that's up behind this picture. He sneaks over there, gets the picture. He gets the paper that's behind the picture, and he sees that it's a key. So we still have yet to see What's going on? Well, now we know there's going to be something with this key. We're probably going to see the next couple episodes what's going on with this damn key, right? Now, while this is going on, we see Gabriel's mom is checking into some kind of room or something. And it's crazy because it looks like sort of like the same apartment that Gabriel got. It just looks really, really weird. It'd be crazy if they have to stand at the same damn apartment that his ass is staying in. But we see her take out this box and she puts this box up on top of her closet. And it says Sam Keaton case files. Just then, she gets a text message from an unknown number, and it says Annalise is back. Who is snitching? Who's snitching? Because it, it wasn't a handful of them that knew that Annalise was back as the doggone was, unless it's Tegan ass. 
Speaking of Tegan, we see where Tegan has got a box. She's moving into Emmett's old office. They done took his name off the dough, put her name on there, Tegan Price, new head of law firm, right? Now, before when she was sitting at his desk, she seen his glasses on there, she was all sad. But baby, this time, she goes in there, she sits down, she sees his glasses on the desk. She like, boy, bye, throws them glasses in the trash. That's why Tegan, girl, sis, if you're going against the grain, baby, we. So as they're doing the exercise, first Connor goes, then Asher goes, then um Oliver goes, right? Next up is Michaela's turn. Now Michaela was kind of like how Annalise was at first. She thought this thumb, she thought it was dumb as hell. She's like, why are we doing this? She hit it one time. Here, I let go of Laurel. That's what it is. Annalise is like, no, look here. Unless you let go of all of this crap that's holding you down. You're going to be miserable like me, bitch. You better beat this shit on up out of you right now, dog on now. So then um, Michaela gets into it. She starts beating. She's like, I, I, you know, to hell with you, Lord. You're dead to me. You're dead to me. Starts beating the hell out the pillow, right? That's an adorable-ass pillow, too. That was beating the hell out the dog on pillow. Next thing you know, Annalise asks Michaela. It feels good, right? She's like, yeah, it does feel good. Here go ask your punk ass. It feel even better if you let her know the truth. Both Annalise and McKenna are like, what truth? What are you talking about? Connor and Oliver trying to tell him, dog, shut up. Here go Asher. Did Annalise knew who your birth father was? Asher. That's the type of nigga you can't trust no doggone way. Now, mind you, Michaela is holding this poker in her hand. As she's saying that, she looks at Annalise. She was like, bitch, if this is true, I'm going to kill you. We get a flash into the future. It's a big old funeral. A lot of people there. The lady is at the podium praying. Here we lay our respects to this body. May this body rest in peace. They go and the picture pans out, baby, and it is Annalise's funeral. Lord. This episode was so doggone good. It was so doggone good. I hope I ain't confused nobody. I tried to hit on all the little important details about it. But y'all, this episode was doggone good. If y'all watched it, if I missed anything, please drop it down below and let me know. I promise y'all, next episode will be on time, okay? I will have it out. Not the same night, y'all already know, because uh, uh, auntie got to go to work bright and early in the morning, so I can't be staying up past no 9 o'clock to 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night trying to bring y'all no doggone review. So y'all will have it the next day. It will be on time. But again, if I miss anything, drop it down below and let me know, y'all. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Auntie got a gulp left. <laughs> and Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. I have.